Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Emma or Emily, who's to say? And I'm kind of a mess. My bookshelves are a lot of bit of a mess, so just ignore all that. I'm gonna talk about my 10 favorite, top 10 books of the year. <laughs> so I have 10 books and then I have some honorable mentions. Two of my favorite books of all time, um, I did read them this year, but not technically for the first time. I read both of them for the first time, like, the very end of December, <laughs> um, and also before I started this channel, so like, yeah. <laughs> that is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Um, technically I did finish it in like the beginning of January, but I read most of it in December and it was already like a favorite at that point. Um, <laughs> And then The Graveyard Book, I read the comic versions in the end of December. And then beginning of January of this year, I read the paperback version for the first time. So I did read that for the first time, but it's basically exactly the same, like, except for the formatting. Oh, another thing really quickly before we get into it. Not all of these books are five stars. I'm not going to go through the ratings. Um, they're all like four to five stars. Um, which you may be wondering, like, Emma, why are there four stars on your favorite list? Because there are definitely other five-star books that I read that aren't on this list. I can't explain it to you. Um, I really can't. I have no idea. It's just how I feel. And I think there's only, like, two of them. <laughs> Maybe I should go back and change them to five stars, but it's just kind of... I don't know, man. <laughs> That's just how it ended up, so... We're gonna start with honorable mentions because I feel like that's what you do. So first off, The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I haven't finished this book, which is why it's not on this list, but I'm loving it so far. And I'm doing a buddy read and I'm way far behind because I should probably be like close to finished by now. Um, and I'm not, I'm not even halfway. Um, so we're just not gonna talk about that. Next, um, because The Graveyard Book isn't on here, I haven't read a lot of Neil Gaiman this year. I haven't read a lot of literary stuff by Neil Gaiman this year. Um, but I did read Sandman, and I think I gave this one like four stars or something, but um, it's so good. It's so good. It's brutal to read, and I would definitely check out the trigger warnings because it is rough. Um, but it's also just impeccably written, and I found out that if you, if you, speak, if you've seen the show Lucifer, um, it's actually sort of based off of this Lucifer because he's mentioned in here. The next one is Circe by Madeline Miller. I just hit myself. Um, I loved this book. It was great. I gave it four stars and it was just because of how I read it and I like got less than halfway through it and then didn't read it for like three months and then started reading it again and I think that really affected <laughs> the experience but I think I'm gonna reread it probably in 2021. Um, I really want to and I'm sure that time around I'll probably give it five stars. I don't know, but yeah. Okay, so now let's get into the actual top 10. And um, there's been some annotating. We're just gonna go with the one that's right next to me right now. Um, <laughs> and that is The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. Um, beginning of the year, I would not have expected this to be at this list, on this list. I don't know. I really liked it. I liked the um, characters. I loved the writing. I thought it was just really cool. <laughs> I liked the lore that was in it, like the mythology, the history. I thought it was great and it was really interesting to read and I highly recommend it. Um, I've only read the first and second book in this series so far, um, but I'm gonna try to read the other two in 2021. What was that fluctuation? Oh, and now I'll just do the ones that I don't physically have with me. The first one is Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. I loved it. The fact that it deals a little bit with ghosts and not in a like super spooky way. Um, and just Nina LaCour, she's done some things right. Like, hot damn. Definitely check the trigger warnings before. Um, I do tend to read a lot of sad books. So I would say for a lot of these, double check the trigger warnings. Um, I think all of them probably have something that might need to be looked at first. 
the next one is Pride by Evie Zavoy. Um, Pride and Prejudice, well, okay. Pride and Prejudice was a bit of a rough time for me. Um, it was so boring in the beginning. <laughs> I wasn't having it, but part three just like swooped in, saved the day. And I think Pride and Prejudice might have been on this list if Pride, if I hadn't read Pride after, or did I read Pride before? I don't even remember, but Pride was just so good. I loved the like, I loved the little twisting of the names and how they still sort of related to each other. I loved the parallels to Pride and Prejudice. I thought it was great. And then all of the added new flair and like poetry and st it was so good. I loved it. Now, I like mythology, all right? You'll notice that from a few of the books selected here, the first of them being Great Goddesses by Nikita Gill. So Great Goddesses is like a poetry collection, but um, they're like larger poems, I guess. They're more long form, I think, and um, more detailed. And it's about the different gods and goddesses and just their stories. And they're so beautiful and like absolutely heartbreaking. It was absolutely great to read because I think me knowing a lot about Greek mythology really helped. Um, they also do use some of the Roman names in here, I think. Right? And then like the artwork, like for Persephone, that's so... Next up is Dear Martin by Nick Stone. I love this book. I listened to it when I first read it and haven't reread it physically yet. Um, and then I also have Dear Justice back there, which I've started reading. It was just, it was so good. <laughs> Like, I don't even know how to phrase it. I just remember a lot of times I would listen to it while I was doing the dishes because I wasn't really going anywhere. And so like doing the dishes was the only absent-minded task that I really had that I could like listen to books during. <laughs> it just blew me away because just Justice's story is so good. And then the letters are great. And reading Dear Justice now is also, it's, it's just, she writes so well, I think, and um, portrays people in a very real way and gets into their, like, I don't know, psyche? I don't know. <laughs> Next up is Smoke Gets In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty. Um, I love this book. I also was able to make these, like, fire themed, and I am proud of it. <laughs> it was a great book. It was so good. I think there were a couple things I had problems with. Um, like there was a little bit of a disconnect between the first part of the book and like kind of around when I started using yellow, but that separate part was also very interesting and I think very necessary to the book. It just felt a little bit strange is all. I also feel like I learned a lot from this book, like not specifically about working at a crematory, but um, like a little bit about people and death, you know, and then also just like she would cite sources of like different death practices and um just like the funeral industry and I thought it was really interesting because I just felt like I was learning things and it was great <laughs> okay you had to know this one was coming beautiful boy by David Sheff um it's such a good book and I mean like this was the first book that I really ever actually annotated and like heavily annotated. I also use sticky notes. There's this one, it was really easy to find where I just used like a bunch of sticky notes. Um, it was the first one that I had really written in and some of my notes were like to me but also like a response to the author and it was just such a fun experience annotating this too because it just really felt like a personal connection to the book. Um, just like on a different level. It's just, it's really a beautiful book. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. It was a great book. It's such a great book that I really want to get a tattoo from it. It was so, so sad. <laughs> like, you know how the mythology ends, but you just, you just don't expect it to end. And then it does and you're like, 
this follows the story of Achilles and the Trojan War, um, but all from Patroclus's point of view, who's like Achilles' best friend. And it's so good seeing it from his point of view. And because um, I've never read the Iliad or the Odyssey. Those are really long books. Um, maybe at some point I'll read them, but not, no, not right now. <laughs> but I, I know the stories, I know the short versions. And so just like getting this was, it was so good. The way she writes, it's very long, it's very detailed. And I think some people might be bored by it, but it's just so beautiful that I just loved it. And I'm so excited for the book that's coming out next. I think it's, um, like a retelling of The Tempest, something like that? I'm not sure. I mean, I kind of wanted a Hades Persephone retelling, but okay, whatever, it happens. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna read anything she publishes. I don't know if it matters which order I put them in if I say they're like tied, cause these, they're all good. Um, <laughs> let's just start with this one. Loveless by Alice Oseman. I'm sure this is not a shocker. Um, basically, I've never read Alice Hosman before until this year, and now I have read everything by her, except for maybe the most recent Heartstopper update. I've given all of it five stars. I've loved all of it. And so choosing one of the books out of all of them that I've read was difficult. But I went with this one because I think it is the one that I, like the characters, I could find a lot of my personality traits in each of them or like our favorite things and stuff like that. And so there was a lot of similarities, I guess, between me and the main character and all of the other characters. So I think this is why this one really spoke out to me. I still love all of the other ones like Radio Silence. I was born for this, Solitaire, all of her novellas and her comics. But I think I just chose this one because as I was reading it, like everything that I read was just like, oh, I love that movie. Oh, I also love that movie. Oh, I love this band. Like just everything <laughs> was working out in that way. If you don't know, this book follows a girl named Georgia and she's sort of figuring out that she um, d hasn't ever really liked anybody or had a crush on them and she's not really sexually attracted to people um, or like romantically attracted to people. But she's always had this rom-com sort of lifestyle like envisioned for her and so her not getting that just seemed kind of crazy for her and it's something that she's really struggling with and she's sort of learning about her sexuality um throughout this entire book and i think it's beautifully written and it's first and foremost about friendship which alice Esmond just does a great job with that okay final book doesn't mean it's my number one, but it's up there. Lovely War by Julie Berry. I loved this book so much. And the mythology part of it. I mean, yeah, it's a, probably like the main part of it. <laughs> um, but in this story, you follow Aphrodite, who's telling two different love stories. So they're sort of intertwined. She's explaining this to sort of... Um, I don't know, redeem herself, not get like convicted um, because Faistus caught her cheating on him with Ares. So basically, first and foremost, this book is from Hephaestus's point of view. And then Hephaestus puts her on trial. So it's then from Aphrodite's point of view while she's telling these stories. But then Aphrodite brings in Ares and Apollo and Hades um, into also pitch in and like tell their points of view on different aspects of the story and it's so great and Hades is amazing. I love Hades so much in mythology. He's just like he's a really cool dude. Hades has a bit in it where he's uh like dressed as a priest and the others are like what? <laughs> and he's just talking about like if the mortal believes in a different worldview besides like Hellenism um He's not going to take that away from them when they die because they're dead and there's no reason to like take that away from them and i think that's just about the sweetest thing and it's just like a very kind approach i guess to death <laughs> okay so those were my top 10 favorite books of 2020. 
that's kind of crazy. Um, I'm currently at like 96 books read and I don't think I'm gonna make it to 100. I still have a lot of schoolwork and I don't think I can read four books that fast. Um, if I didn't have schoolwork, no problem, but I do. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and if you did please give it a like and comment down below if you've read any of these or if you're looking to read any of them and just let me know what you thought or think or anything like that and I hope you guys have an amazing time and I'll see you later. Bye!